Welcome to this proof of concept video. This is a follow-up video to the previous one titled Modular Arithmetic in Motion. In that last video we introduced the notion of a dynamical portrait showing addition or multiplication by one element of z mod nz. Here's an example on our intro screen here, the portrait of adding 3 modulo 8. The arrows show what adding 3 does to each element. Notice that if you follow these arrows around in this example, you get one big cycle. In the last video, we saw that for additive dynamics, we often got cycles, and we described the cycle sizes for the dynamics of plus 1 and plus 2. We saw that for multiplicative dynamics, sometimes the portraits were made of cycles and sometimes they weren't. And we proved that a dynamical portrait is made of cycles if and only if the associated function is bijective. Here's what we mean by function. It's the function that adds a in the additive dynamics or multiplies by a in the multiplicative dynamics. This is the function that we're drawing a picture of. Okay, our goal for today is to answer the following question about these portraits. For additive dynamics, what is the dynamical portrait? If you're in my class, then in between these two videos, we did some worksheets to discover the answer to this question by exploration, conjecture, and proof. And I encourage everyone to check the links in the description to access these. This video can serve as a sum summary of that exploration or stand on its own. Okay, let's get started. First, let's check out some additive dynamics. Here are some portraits of the additive dynamics of plus one modulo n for various different n. In the last video, we proved that for every positive modulus n, the picture is just one big cycle. Here are some portraits of the additive dynamics of plus 2 modulo n for various n. In the last video, we noticed that these come in two flavors. So there's either one big cycle, like this one, follow it around, or um, even if it looks all fold up, folded up the way it's drawn here, or two cycles of equal size, like this one, we also proved that if n is odd, we get the one big cycle, and if n is even, we get the two cycles. Okay, now let's look at some more examples. Here are the additive dynamics of plus 3 modulo n for various n. By the way, I have a tool on my website for drawing these pictures, which uses Sage Mathematics software, um, which you'll find at a link in the description. Okay, so for these examples, let's label them with the list of cycle lengths. So mod 2 we have one cycle of length 2 and for mod 3 we have three cycles of length 1 because adding 3 mod 3 doesn't change anything um, and so on and so forth. So can you guess the pattern here? Sometimes there's one cycle and sometimes three equally sized ones and notice that the three cycle pattern seems to appear when the modulus n is divisible by 3. Okay so it looks like there's definitely patterns, but let's take another tack. Instead of fixing a and varying the modulus n, let's try fixing the modulus and varying a. So I've picked a modulus of 12 here because it's highly divisible, so we might see some of these different divisibility patterns, divisibility behaviors that we've been noticing. Okay, now let's try the additive dynamics of plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, and plus 6. Here are some beautiful patterns. So I've colored each individual cycle in a different color so that you can differentiate them. Let's go ahead and label each diagram with the cycle lengths. So sometimes we see one big cycle of length 12, like for plus 1 and plus 5. We also see cases of two cycles of length 6, three cycles of length 4, four cycles of length three, and even six cycles of length two in the last picture. So hmm, that's a lot of structure, okay? It's definitely not random. There's definitely a lot going on. Before we get into the numerology of all these, these numbers, let's just notice that in every single example we've seen, we've had a portrait made of cycles. So recall from the last video that this happens when the function f of x equals x plus a is bijective. So let's quickly see why this function really is always bijective. Theorem. Let n be a positive integer, and let a be an integer. Then f from z mod nz to z mod nz, given by f of x equals x plus a, is bijective. Proof. We need to show f is bijective, which means surjective and injective. Since f is a function from a finite set to itself, it's actually surjective if and only if it's injective. 
This is a standard result from the study of functions, so we'll use it here to get away with only showing one of surjective or injective. I'll actually choose to show injectivity. So I only need to say here, since z mod nz is finite, it suffices to show that f is injective. That's all we have to do. We only have to do one of them. Okay, so now let's use the definition of injectivity. All right, so let f of x equal f of y. Our goal is to show that then x equals y. So using the definition of f, that means x plus a is congruent to y plus a modulo n. But then we can subtract a from both sides, so x is congruent to y mod n. Therefore, we've achieved what we needed. Therefore, f is injective, hence bijective, and we are done. Okay, great. Um, we saw in the last video that for a bijective function, the dynamics will always be made up of cycles. So that means that what we've just proven is that the additive dynamics always consists of cycles. Okay, so let's go back to our data. Let's look again at the data we were just looking at. In our previous examples and in these examples, notice that the cycles are always the same size. So why might that be? Let's zoom up on one of these. Let's zoom up on the dynamics of plus 3 mod 12. That's shown at left here. I'm going to use the dots on the right to draw the dynamics again, only this time with the dots in different positions to highlight a different aspect. Okay, so to show, remember our goal here is to show that the cycles are all the same size. To show that two things are the same size, one frequent strategy is to try to give a bijection between the two things. So we try to line them up so that you can see the one-to-one co -one correspondence. Okay, so this example falls into three cycles of size four. On the right here, I'm gonna line them up nicely next to one another. So let's watch them play out. So we're starting at zero, one, and two. Here are the cycles, boom. So they seem to line up. In fact, you can just add one to get from the first cycle to the second and the second to the third. In the circular version of this diagram um, on the left here, this is a rotation. So first cycle, second cycle, third cycle. Okay, so in fact, all the cycles have the same structure. So they look like k goes to k plus three, goes to k plus six, then to k plus nine and back to k. So once you've figured out k, you've got the whole cycle. Changing k gives you one of the other cycles. So all the cycles really look the same in some sense, and we can expect them to be the same size. Okay, so let's see if we can turn this into a proof. Theorem. In the additive dynamical portrait of x maps to x plus a modulo n, the cycles are all the same size. Proof. So we'll show all the cycles are the same size as the cycle passing through zero. Okay, of length k. So the cycle passing through 0 has the form 0 going to a, going to 2a, and so on, and back to 0. And if it's length k, that means it goes up to k minus 1 times a, and then back. Okay, But the integer k here, which gives the length, is determined by the property that it's the smallest positive integer such that k a is congruent to 0 modulo n. Now suppose we consider another cycle passing through some other element m and having length l. Then it looks like this, it goes m to m plus a, m plus 2a, and so on, and back. Okay, And the integer l is characterized by being the smallest positive integer such that m plus l a is congruent to m mod n, because that's exactly the condition that you're repeating, that you hit the beginning again. All right, so there's our two cycles. But notice that these two conditions here differ just by subtracting an m from both sides. They're actually the same condition. So um, the defining condition for k and l are equivalent. And so k is equal to l, and we are done. OK, great. Now we've shown two things about the additive dynamics modulo n. First, the portrait consists of cycles. And second, the cycles are all of the same size. All that's left to give a complete description is to figure out what that single common size is and how many there are. But actually, these two quantities determine each other. So in that sense, it's equivalent to ask either of these questions. Answering one will actually give the answer to both. OK, let's go back to our data. Let's tabulate the data um, from the examples we were looking at and a few more. It might be easier to see some patterns when it's displayed this way. So here's a table showing A n, the cycle size, and the number of cycles. Can you guess the pattern? Can you see it? Let's see what we can notice. So first, 
you might notice that the cycle size and the number of cycles both divide the modulus. Now, if you pause and think about this, it actually has to happen because the portrait, which has, which has n total elements, is dividing into cycles all of the same size. So in fact, these two numbers actually need to multiply um, up to the modulus. So if we can figure out one of them, then we can figure out both of them. All right, good. Second, you might notice that the number of cycles seems to divide the integer a. This is just an observation, just seems to be true. Sometimes they're equal, sometimes it's a strict divisor. So here's the factor between the two so you can see it a little more clearly. So take a equals 5 for example here. 5 doesn't divide 12 and we know the number of cycles has to divide the modulus so we couldn't actually have 5 cycles. But 1 divides both a and n so that's that works out. Okay so here's what we've observed so far. The number of cycles divides a and n. It divides both of them. So here's an idea. Let's put the GCD of A and N as a column. That's the biggest thing dividing A and N. So we can compare the number of cycles, which divides both A and N, with the GCD, the biggest thing dividing A and N. Okay, look at that. Do you see it? The last two columns seem to agree. So we actually have our conjecture. Conjecture. The additive dynamics of A modulo N has GCD of A and N cycles, of size n divided by GCD of a and n. All right, how might we prove this? So first, recall that all our cycles are the same size. So the number of cycles times the cycle size is the total number of elements n. So this me means that we only need to figure out one or the other to get both of them. So first of all, notice that our conjecture checks out here. The two quantities in blue do in fact multiply together to give n. So what about the cycle size? The cycle size is actually the easier of the two to access here. So we gave a condition for it before. The cycle size is k, the smallest integer satisfying b plus ka is congruent to b modulo n. In other words, it's the first moment at which the cycle repeats itself. So here b is just whatever we're using as the starting point for our cycle. So we might as well take b equals zero. The condition is actually independent of b in the sense that no matter what b we take, this defines the same k. So we can write ka is congruent to 0 mod n. Now recall that the definition of modular equivalence is given in terms of divisibility, so this is the same as saying that n divides ka. So finally now we're asking for k to be the smallest thing we need to multiply a by to get n. So a might already contain some of n, that is there's some GCD of a and n that measures how much of n is already contained in a. What we need to multiply by to get up to n is just whatever's left, which is n over the GCD of a and n. Here's a little picture that might clarify that. So we aim to get all of n, but we have the green GCD part from having a already, and we need the rest, which is n divided by GCD, to get there. Okay, so our conjecture is a theorem. Let's write it out neatly. Theorem. The additive dynamics of A modulo N has GCD of A and N cycles of size N over GCD of A and N. Proof. Consider the cycle that contains zero. It looks like this. The length K is just the smallest positive integer such that KA is congruent to zero mod N. In other words, such that n divides ka. The integer g, defined as gcd a n, is the largest integer such that g divides both a and n. Therefore, k equals n over g as required. Since all cycles are the same size, the number of cycles times the cycle size must give n. Therefore, the number of cycles is gcd a of n, gcd of a and n and we are done. So there we have it. We've given a complete description of the additive dynamics of A modulo n. So now armed with this experience investigating additive dynamics, I task you with figuring out the multiplicative dynamics of A mod modulo n. So go exploring. Check the links in the description for worksheets and follow-up videos, and happy travels!